Shalom, Tahala Yahawa, Bashem Yavshai, Bashem Rukhob Radash. Double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect, who the house of David will be born again in this generation. And Shalom to the one third of Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, who before losing our true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about the announcement today of the 90 seconds to midnight which the world is at and we're going to get into how that's biblical but let's read this first this is revelations 11 and 14. the second woe is past and behold the third woe cometh quickly now john the revelator here was describing a vision which he was given where he had seen world war ii and World War III fast approaching. Now, we are currently living in this time which John seen that World War III was coming quickly. The members of the Science and Security Board move the hands of the doomsday clock forward, largely, though not exclusively, because of the mounting dangers in the war in Ukraine. We move the clock forward the closest it has ever been to midnight. It is now 90 seconds to midnight. How long does humanity have left? The doomsday clock says we are 90 seconds away from midnight after atomic scientists reset the predicted point of the world's annihilation in January 2023. Ready 23 at this point looks pretty dark. But what does that really mean? And where did the concept of the Doomsday Clock even come from? The Doomsday Clock is a symbolic timepiece showing how close the world is to ending. Midnight marks the theoretical point of annihilation. Every year, scientists move the hands of the clock closer to or further away from midnight, based on their reading of existential threats at that time. Cambridge University's expert on existential threat, Paul Ingram, explains. It uh, emerged at the beginning of the Cold War to, uh, to give a sense of the urgency uh, to achieve nuclear disarmament and to climb out of the abyss that we were facing in the early 1950s. And in more recent times, it has taken on climate change and uh, emerging disruptive technology to give it a sense of the risks, the catastrophic risks that we face uh, as a planet, uh, largely through our own uh, deliberate uh, activities. Albert Einstein was among a group of atomic scientists who created the clock back in 1947. These days, a Chicago-based NGO called the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists updates the time annually. A board of scientists and other experts in nuclear technology and climate science, including 13 Nobel laureates, discuss world events and determine where to place the hands of the clock each year. At 90 seconds to midnight, the doomsday clock is now the closest it has ever been to midnight. We've seen the, uh, the emergence of a new war, uh, invasion of Ukraine, uh, the, the warnings of nuclear weapons use, uh, we've seen the failure of COP27 to come up with any serious attempts to curb the activities of the fossil fuel industry. And we've seen the emergence of new uh, artificial intelligence capabilities, uh, which we still haven't really grasped uh, the full extent of the risks that that, that that has for humanity. When the clock first started ticking more than 75 years ago, it sat at seven minutes to midnight. In 1991, the clock was the furthest it had ever been from Doomsday, at 17 minutes. That was the time when the Cold War ended, and the United States and Soviet Union signed the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty that substantially reduced both countries' nuclear weapons arsenals. The clock has now been moved even closer to midnight. If we, uh, uh, if we maintain a, a, an addiction to competition and to conflict as a way of managing our uh, social interactions and our interactions with the ecosystems, uh, we will perish. Uh, I think as the threats go get larger and that we become more aware and we understand them better, there is hope 
I think that we do change our practices and the way we, we think and the, approach these things. 90 seconds to midnight. So as you've seen there, Akim, you got Esau's perspective, right? Or I should say at least his skewed perspective of what's actually going on. Because you see, though th this may seem like it's a warning, it's really just Esau, you know, basically trying to frame the narrative of what's going on, right? You see, Esau has a vested interest in making the world believe, you know, that we are in the very end of the world and henceforth, you know, we must do everything he says because, again, one thing you may notice, even though they try to put some, you know, Moabite, some Chinese man up there on that, on that stage, it was all nothing but Edomites on there, okay? All through the other presentations, all Edomites, right? And why is that? Well, because just like, you know, this is Esau's world, right? And when I say Esau, I'm talking about the Caucasian race because the Caucasian race's biblical name is the nation of Edom. Hence, they are Esau, right? Or they're descendants of Esau. So Edom is basically, you know, using this moment where we are actually at the end, right? But the thing is, is, is just like in that movie, Resident Evil, where they had the elites saying that the world was ending, but they should end it on their terms, right? That's basically what Esau is trying to do here, right? He knows that he is at the very end of his empire, and what he's trying to do is 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 do everything he can to uh, basically, you know, e extend that empire, right? If if that be that, you know, he kills off, you know, se you know, seven point five billion people in the world so be it right this is what esau says in his in his heart right if that's gonna lead to everybody that's alive still you know being uh you know microchipped then hey that's his goal right he, he's fine with it okay and why is that because he understands that this is his kingdom and that the kingdom to come uh is not for his turn right this is why he's also ramping up his military rep you know building up Technology. This is why he's been hiding technology for the last, you know, 40 to 100 years and basically, you know, storing it away so that way when the Messiah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, whose true Hebrew name is Yahweh Shai, shows up on the scene, that they, they believe that they're going to have some ability to fight against them. But again, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible, you know, tells you. That the, that the Lord is going to destroy Esau without even, you know, lifting a hand or any weapon, right? And that's exactly what's happening. So again, you know, the reason I stopped it here at this frame is because I want you to notice this Edomite's lapel pin, right? This one here. It's not an LGBT pin. When you look at it, it's actually this pin here, right? And that pin goes into the UN Sustainable development goals that they have to for the great reset okay so this is why i said all this is because you know, again even though esau here is trying to give the world uh, a sense of warning what it really is is that they're basically trying to 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 up the anxiety in people to 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 get everybody to have this this feeling that you know we are at the end which you know we are but what they're doing is they're leading them in the wrong path, right? They're, they're, they're warning that there's fire in the, in the theater, but what they're doing, instead of them leading everybody out of the exit, they're leading them into a pit, which the fire is actually uh, you know, at, right? And why is that? Because at the end of that goal, end of all these goals here, is they're hoping to cement their, their ultimate empire, right? Where it's, it'll never fall, right? Because they understand that right now the, 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 their nation, right is 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 slowly dying out they also understand that spiritually well at least those in the very higher echelon understand that their time to reign is now coming to an end right? let's get that this is second ezra six and nine for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of that which followeth right and this right here is is plain and simple right esau or is the caucasian race right which Again, as much as they like to pretend and, and as many times that they try to put some token, you know, Judite or some token Moabite or, you know, any other minority, you know, in, in, you know, at the forefront, you know, put, they put them on the, 
the anchor seat. They put them in directing roles. They put them in, you know, places of, of, of semi-power so that way they could give an illusion that, you know, it's not all of them that running, are running the, the, the spotlight. You know, when you look at who actually is running this world, you know, you basically got, it's, it's these Edomites, man. It's these Edomites and basically all their, their cronies, right? The people who are there, they're bringing along with them. Okay, it's the wicked of the world, right? As Job says, 924, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Now, back to that scripture that had said that Esau is the end of the world and, and Jacob is that which followeth. Jacob is us, the Negro, Latino, Native Americans, and anybody whose father's lineage goes back to that bloodline, right? The, the Israelites, okay? You see, when the Lord returns, right? When, when Armageddon kicks off, right? When the... The, the clock hits midnight and nuclear, you know, you know, Armageddon is, is started, you know, this is what's going to happen is the Messiah is going to show up and he's going to save the one third plus 144,000 elect of the nation of Israel, right? I'm not talking about this, those Israeli rats over in the land of Israel today. I'm talking about the Negro, Latino, Native Americans and anybody whose lineage goes, father's lineage, excuse me, goes back to the bloodline, okay? The Lord is going to come down save the elect and the 144,000 let the earth continue to destroy itself and also if he's going to also uh you know do his own uh, work him and the angels right they're going to uh, start attacking and destroy the armies of the world right and they're going to ultimately pulverize them right to the point where this is what's going to happen it says this is uh second peters 3 and 10 but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up right and this right here is talking about the crescendo of armageddon which is the nuclear annihilations of america and the nato western powers right because again that uh, if, if you're not in the know america is the is the fifth beast right or is a uh, described in the uh in daniel's vision described in chapter two and also chapter seven right where he were basically the uh, feet of of clay and, and iron right that empire is the edomite em world empire right and that makes up the the americans the french the english the russians and all the wherever the caucasian race is at that's the that's the edomite empire okay so it's not going to be like a, a perfectly drawn line between you know at a at a nation right all the all the you know for the most part the america and uh, the western powers are going to be destroyed right they're going to be consumed in what is known as the lake of fire and there's going to be other edomites who escape this destruction but they're only going to be saved um, from the from the nuclear annihilation to go directly into slavery because again when the lord returns which actually let's read it this is uh Revelations 20 and 14 and death and hell were cast in to the lake of fire this is the second death right and what is that second death well second death is the nuclear annihilation that you know this great horror that is brought upon the earth by the hands of these Edomites right you know but by the will of the Lord because again these neck these nuclear weapons were given to these Edomites by a uh, by, by the Lord's will, right? It's crazy. There's a there's a show called American Horror Story, and, and season ten, <clears throat> towards the end of the season, they had this uh, <clears throat> this part of this episode where <clears throat> they showed like it, there's this uh, big rumor where uh, a man called Valiant Thor showed up to basically the U.S. government, and he was basically an alien, and he gave to these Edomites all this. Uh, Futuristic technology, which also included nuclear weaponry, all right. Also, uh, <clears throat> but ultimately, what that was, you know, if that did actually, in fact, happen, that was the angels on the left hand side tricking these Edomites and basically giving them the, the the weaponry and the technology they needed to fulfill the Lord's prophecy. One, that they would rule the world through the weaponry, and second, that they shall bring, you know, that they shall call down lightning from heaven. Right? This is all biblical prophecy. And again, it's, and this is all happening because this, 
what we know as existence is simply a stage. It's a movie, and it's the Lord's movie, right? And he has the good guys who are the Israelites, and he has the bad guys who are the Edomites, and he has the background characters who are the other nations of the world, okay? And what's going to happen to the bad guy? Well, they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And what is that lake of fire? That lake of fire is the basically America and the, those other neonatal nations basically consumed in in uh in fire man you know and basically being uh you know uh burnt up and you know i made an image of this which you can kind of see right here basically you see john looking out of the uh portal of the chariots looking upon america right just seeing it being consumed as if it was a lake of fire right and the smoke just ascended you know like he said man it's, it ascendeth forever and ever and you're just gonna have a bunch of chariots out there just saving the, the elect, you know, holding the elect, having them see what's going on, witnessing the destruction of, of the uh, Edomite Empire, right? And what's going to happen after that? Well, is it, you know, the, the earth is going to be renewed and it's going to be basically made heaven, right? The, 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 the new earth is going to be, um, it's going to basically be, be refreshed, right? Because all that fervent heat, all that fire that's going to basically melt the elements, it's going to disintegrate and all these pollutants and all these things man that, that esau has managed to destroy the world with okay and when we come back down to earth right we're going to be described we were described as new jerusalem but you know there's going to be a, a, a an amount of building that's going to need to take place to make this earth be exactly what we want it to be right to make it to make it be the way Shai wants it right to be heaven on earth well that's going to be the job of us israelites who were selected right as the elect to to basically make sure that these other nations are building up you know we're going to basically put them into slavery right they're going to go into servitude and they're going to you know serve us in helping to build the the nation the world back up in in a way which is you know suiting to you know suitable to the lord right so you know for all the rest of you israelites man out there let's you know this is for you right those who uh who haven't decided to to finally you know fully take this in this is ecclesiasticus 5 and 7. make no tearing to turn to the lord and put not off from day to day for suddenly shall the wrath of the lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance right and that's exactly what's happening man you see right now you're seeing all the buildup of all the armies around the world man you know, there is just talks today about how uh, the American politicians, the Biden's cabinets, working feverishly to basically seal the contract to, to send over battalions of Abrams tanks. Now, that's a big deal, man. What's the, what's the tanks are over there, man? They're not just going to go over there just to look pretty, right? To be, a, to be going down on parades and stuff. No, man, they're going to be over there to do the work. What is that work? War, right? And what that, what's that war going to eventually do? It's going to ultimately spill down to uh, the, the area right outside of Israel known as Megiddo, right? The Valley of Jehoshaphat, right? And also what happened recently this last week, you had uh, uh, Biden, the Biden administration, which this started with the Trump administration, basically talking about how they're going to start um, basically increasing military action there in the land of Syria, which is right above the land of Megiddo, man. So, so again, if we're not going to be sending troops over to Ukraine, troops are, and weaponry over there, it's going to be going to Syria. And hence the fulfilling of the prophecy where the Lord's going to gather all the armies of the world into the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That's, you know, it's plain along, right? So again, if you can't see that all these prophecies are coming, coming to play, that Esau, he's playing, you know, his hand. He's putting through all these agendas, right? He's just, they're, they're talking again today was the day that Biden's um, cabinet uh, is, is in, was in court to talk about bringing back the the mass mandates and basically the, the, the ability to lock us down in our houses again, right? Which was struck down by that judge in Florida. But again, it's, I'm telling you, Akim, you know, it, things are moving fast. And as John says, man, the third world cometh quickly. And as Apostle Tahar, you know said this he, he coined this year as the year the hopeful the hopeful year that prophecy starts to to 
is, that the year of, that prophecy is fulfilled, right? So, you know, I can see it. It's happening, right? So, hopefully this video was out of fight. I'll until the next time. I want to give all our glory and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Kokor, Dash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. Shalom.